Barakati Hawa, Barakati Hawa Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto our Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and the Rakah Kodash, which is the Holy Spirit. As always, double honors to our leaders, our apostles, our elders, and bishops all right, that taught us this truth and who are ruling well. Shalom, peace, and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers that push the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The correct breakdowns of the scriptures to help edify the elect of the house of Israel. Shalom to those of you that are of the household of faith, that believe, or that are waiting patiently for the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. All right, and the last and final prophecies to happen and unfold in the earth, you know, which the Heavenly Father, you know, gave us the moon. All right, he gave us the sun, he gave us the stars. All right, he gave them to us, all right, for, you know, great lights, you know, to uh, lighten the earth, you know, one in the daytime, one in the night, you know, as well as the uh, the stars. But he also gave them to us for signs, you know, and for seasons and days and years in which there's a uh, coming, you know, solar eclipse that will take place, you know, on April 8th. You know, as well as, you know, other events to take place in the heavens, you know, such as uh, the devil's comet, or as they call it. And all of these things are for signs. You know, um, a matter of fact, the scripture says in the book of Luke, and I believe is also in the book of Matthew as well. All right, the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, and going down to... Uh, about the 25th verse, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, the stress of nations uh, with perplexities, the sea and the waves roaring, which we believe that this particular solar eclipse all right, will be significant, you know, as a sign that's portent. Okay, and we can look up the word portent as well. Let's define it. All right, the word portent all right, is um, something that foreshadows a coming event, an omen, a sign, a prophetic indication or, sig of, or significance. All right, so this is, this is portent all right, from the Heavenly Father, you know, as we all right, enter into all right, the era, you know, of the MOTB being pushed and mandatory. All right, um... The time of Jacob's trouble, all right, as well as these nations coming together, all right, for great war, all right, major signs and things are happening, all right, which are making known that this is the end. Now, I'd like to take the opportunity, all right, to go into the the new moon, the full moon, and the Sabbath, all right, which is important. You know, although some may make it seem as if it's unimportant, all right, as if it's insignificant, all right, as the, the Christian church likes to push, oh, the Sabbath isn't important, you know, or the particular laws of the Heavenly Father isn't important, you know, um, although, you know, keeping these laws perfectly would not be enough to save you, all right, you have to be a part of the elect, all right, and the scriptures, the scripture says that the just shall live by faith. You know, now the just and those that are part of the elect of the Heavenly Father will to their ability all right, try to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father to the best of their ability. But however, being imperfect in the flesh, you know, we tend to go off from time to time. And that's the reason, you know, that we thank the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, for his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, all right, and for the, the liberty, all right, for the grace, for the mercy which will soon be taken away. And when that grace and mercy is taken away, what do you think people are going to be judged on? What do you think that they're going to be judged on? If the scriptures say that they shall be judged according to what they have done in the flesh, whether it be good or evil. All right, so for those that rejected right, the word of the Heavenly Father, all right, his commands, 
all right, and you are benefited, you know, from his, his, his liberty, his grace, his mercy, all right, but you despise his commands and you threw him behind your back, all right, it's just going to go ill with you in that day. Now, however, the scripture do say, let no man judge you, all right, in uh, respect of holy day. Let's grab that as well. All right, the book of Colossians 2 and 16. All right, it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or in the new moon or of the Sabbath days. All right, which, um, you know, you may not get it right, you know, the first go round or whatever. But however, you know, if the heavenly father is dealing with you, all right, eventually you'll come around to it. All right, what you get. Um, new believers that are coming into the faith, all right, and they may not, you know, get it right, you know, eventually, but eventually they'll get it. But that doesn't mean just totally disrespect the holy days of the Heavenly Father, all right, the new moon, all right, the Sabbath, all right, we still respect those days, all right, and to the best of our ability, we try to keep them, all right, but you have newcomers coming into faith, all right, that basically has to have to grow in this thing. All right, they're not just going to come in this thing and off bell, just keeping it accurately all right, and perfectly. All right, you know, they have to grow into it. You know, it's like a, a, a new pair of shoes. You know, they're too big. You know, you know how it is as a parent. You know, you buy the shoes a little too big so that they can grow into it. Well, the same thing with this thing. All right. Now, um, when you go into the book of Genesis 1 and 13, it says, in the evening and the morning were the third day. And the Most High said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, which is the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night. All right, he made all right, the stars also, and the Most High set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And the um, and as I say, the Most High in powers, rather, I should say, in powers, saw that it was good in the evening, in the morning, with the fourth day. You know, which um, when you go into the word God within these particular verses, uh, the word there will be Allah Hayyam, which is dealing with powers because this is Yahweh Shai and the angels that were creating all these things. So as you can see, all right, the powers created the, the, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And they gave them. For signs and for seasons and days and years. All right. So clearly. By the sun, you can tell that is that is daytime by the sun. You can tell, you know, whether it's winter, you know, or whether, you know, it's summer. Uh, obviously, the summer days have longer days. You know, the winter days are shorter, you know, by the moon. You can tell what day it is. You can tell what month it is. All right. By the moon, you can tell. You know, um, if there's an important event that's getting ready to take place, all right, such as a sign, all right, it's given as a sign in the heavens. You know, you got lunar and solar eclipses. All right, those are signs from the Heavenly Father. Now, in the book of uh, Sirach, the 43rd chapter, verse 6, it says, He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of what? Of times. And a sign and a sign of the world from the moon is the sign of feast. So based upon the moons, you count the moons, you know that it's the first, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleven, or twelfth month. And depending on how many moons it is, let's say for instance, you know, it's the it's the um springtime, you know, and you see uh, no moon in the sky. You know that that's the beginning of the year. Okay. You know, and from that month, you count, you know, uh, um, 
you know, after the Passover, you account a certain amount of days, then you have a certain feast come up, you know, then you account a, a, another certain amount of moons and, you know, another feast will come up, you know, so the moon is a sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. Why? Because when the, when the, when is the moon perfect? The moon is perfect when there's a full round circle, circle in the sky. That's when the moon, uh, the moon is perfect, but it says it, de it decreases in its perfection, you know, so it goes through its stages, you know, there's, um, uh, 29.5 days within a moon cycle for that month. So from when there's no moon in the sky, it increases. And when there's there's a full moon, it begins to decrease. So it goes fuller and fuller, you know, until it's completely full and then it decreases. Um, it says the month is called after her name. All right. Increasing being an instrument of the armies above shining in the firmament of heaven. Now, when you go even in the English you know, to the word uh, month, right? Which in the word, um, what is that? In the Hebrew, Salakia. All right, when you go into the word uh, for moon. All right, it shows you that it's dealing with a, a month. Uh, for an example, you go into new moon, which the word there is chadash, all right? And it says the new moon. It says month, monthly, all right? The lunar month, which we'll get to that in a second. But anyways, let's uh, continue reading right here, which I got this information from the online etymology dictionary. It says one twelfth part of a year, because there's 12 parts in, in a year, not 13, all right, as, as you got a false doctrine going out there saying that it's uh, 13 months in a year. No, it's not. Okay? It's only 12. That's how the Heavenly Father created. <clears throat> it says, one of the 12 parts into which the calendar year is um, arbitrarily divided. Old English, Mano, Mano. Uh, from Proto-Germanic Minoth, source also of Old Saxon Manoth, Old Frasian um, Monath, Middle Dutch Manate, Dutch Maan, or Old High German Manat, German Manat, Old Norse Manor, uh, Gothic Manaps Month. Which is related to Minan, moon. See? Moon. Originally, the month was the interval between one new moon and the next. Now, when you go into... What is that? The book of Isaiah? The uh, 66th chapter, verse 23... And it shall come to pass that from one moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship all right, before me, except Yahweh. See? So from one new moon to the other. Now, going to the book of 1 Samuel, verse 20, uh, like here, chapter 20, verse 24. So David hid himself in the field. And when the moon, new moon was come, the king set, uh, set him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even upon the seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose and Abner sat by Saul's side and David, uh, David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spoke not anything that day, for he thought something hath befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which is the second day of the month. 
All right, that David's place was empty. And Saul said John, uh, unto Jonathan, his son, Wherefore cometh uh, uh, not the son of Jesse to me, neither yesterday or today? So this clearly shows you that the new moon determines uh, the month. And also, it is the first day of the month. So what is the new moon? That's when no, no moon is visible in the sky at all. You know, when it's, when it's black, when it's dark. All right, the uh, definition of moon, a month, many moons have passed since he brought uh, perspective, all right, investors home. That was just a, uh, uh, them using it in a sen sentence. But however, uh, one moon cycle is one month, see? So if the new moon the, is the first day of the month and it determines the month, then that means that from the new moon, you count seven days and you will get to the eighth day. OK, and that will be the first Sabbath. Now, this is from Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, verse one. It says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them concerning the feast of Yahweh, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall you uh, work be done, but on the Sabbath, uh, seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh, all right, in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of Yahweh, even the holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in, the, in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month at even. All right, is Yahweh's Passover. So if you go from one day when there's new, no moon in the sky, all right, and you go to the 14th going into the 15th day, what will be in the sky? It will be a full moon, okay? It will be a full moon. On the first month at even, it is Yahweh's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month, all right, it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yahweh. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. All right, and when we kept, when we kept um, this Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, all right, on the night of the Passover, you know, or on, you know, going for the 14th, going into the 15th day, what do we see in the sky? We saw a full moon. All right, we saw a full moon. It wasn't a... a, 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 a uh, dark moon, all right, which will be considered a new moon, which goes to show you that we're on point, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So once again, Isaiah 66 and 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come and worship before me, said Yahweh. So uh, the new moon, is when there's no moon in the sky, the full moon and is when, you know, there is a visible moon in the sky. You know, that's when the, 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 the moon covers, you know, um, a, what is that song? How does that song go? Like when the moon hits your eye, like a, a, a big pizza pie, <laughs> you know? So that's when the, the moon is full in the sky and is visible, you know, and there's scriptures to prove that. For an example, a scripture that shows that the, um, the, 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 uh, shows the full moon, right? The book of songs of Solomon 6 and 10. And this is from the KJV. It says, who is she that looketh forth at the morning? Fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible uh, as the army with banners. Now, when you read this in context, all right, it says fair as the moon, then it says clear as the sun. Now, when you think about a clear sky and seeing the sun, the sun is beaming, is radiant. You can, you know, you barely can look at it, you know, because of how bright it is. So we we'll have to be the same concerning the moon. It's talking about a, a full moon. All right. It says fair as the moon, because when the moon is full, it looks beautiful. 
You know, it looks beautiful. You know, it, it looks it looks white. Now they're saying that it's starting to uh, rust because of uh, hematite forming on the surface of it. You know, which I don't know how true that is. But however, you know, the small hash take that as a sign that now it's time to start preparing the um, the, the physical third temple, which they never built the first. They never built the second. And they and they're damn sure ain't about to build no no third one. You know, and if they do, it's going to be completely destroyed. All right. The third temple that's, that was built and being built is really talking about us. The scriptures say that he was set them in order before thine eyes. All right. It's speaking about the tabernacle of David being built, which is the elect of the nation of Israel. So when you go into the word moon. In uh, Songs of Solomon 6 and 10, the word that comes up is Labana. Okay, Labana. And it says moon as white because that's when the, the moon is full, it appears visibly white. And matter of fact, when you go into um, Strong's H35, all right, when you go into Strong H35, which is Laban, it says to grow white, to grow white. So when the moon begins to grow white, we know that we are approaching a, a, a full moon. And then we also know that we're approaching uh, the halfway marker through the month. Another scripture that that uh, proves, you know, that a full moon is when the moon is completely visible in the sky. All right. Is the book of Proverbs 7 and 20. And this comes from. I'm going to read from 18. But then I'm going to read 20 in the KJV and in the NLT. This is Proverbs 7 and 18. It says, come, let us take our fill in, of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He have taken a bag of money with him. He will. Oh, oh, and will come home at the date appointed. So when you look up the date appointed, the, the uh, word that comes up in Hebrew is H3677, which is Kasa. And it says full moon. It says full moon. Now, reading that same scripture in the book of Proverbs 7 and 20, in the NLT, it says he has taken a wallet full of money with him and won't return until later this month. So when does the full moon appear? The full moon appears later in the month. It, it appears later in the month. Now, let me grab another scripture and I'll end on this one. The book of Psalms 83 and 3, it says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the appointed time on our solemn feast day. Now, I don't know, know if you caught that. But remember in Proverbs 7 and, and the 20 in the KJV, it says he have taken a bag of money with him. And will come at the day appointed. So when we looked up day appointed, remember it led us to the word kasa in the Hebrew, which was H thirty six seventy seven. And what word was that? It was full moon. We read it in the NLT, and it says later until later this month. So in the book of Psalms eighty three eighty one and three, when it says blow up the trumpet in the new moon and the time appointed on our solemn feast days. The new moon is the beginning of the month and in the appointed, in the time appointed, we'll be talking about later on in the month, which will be the 15th day, halfway through the month. Reading Psalms 81 and 3 in the NLT, blow the ram's horn at the new moon and again, at full moon to call a festival. So what the hell is 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 Bishop Nathaniel talking about when he says that the um 
that the full moon is the new moon. You clearly going off. All right, and for all of you other Israelites that are out there that can't get the Sabbath right, you know, or uh, refuse to to uh, deal with the Sabbath according to the new moon, really, you're just being lazy as hell. All right, a lot of your feast days and you know your your uh, fest you know your festival days according to the scriptures are based off of what the small hats do, and you're lazy. You know, because you don't want to really look into it. So you rather just deal with a Sunday, I mean, a, a Friday sundown, Saturday sundown, Sabbath or Shabbat. Which there's no Friday or there's no Saturday within the scriptures. So this lesson was going into the new moon, the full moon and the Sabbath. And as you can see, the full moon shows up later on in the month. It's not the beginning of the month. It doesn't dictate the the um the uh the flow of the Sabbaths. All right, it doesn't. And what I mean is, it's not the first day of the month. So clearly, whatever the new moon falls on, that's what day the Sabbath is going to be on. So if it falls on a a um. A Saturday sundown to Sunday sundown. That's you know that's what day that the the new moon is gonna be on. If it falls on a on a on a Monday sundown to Tuesday sundown, the new moon that is that's what day that the Sabbath is gonna be on. So the new moon dictates the Sabbaths. So the, the eventually, obviously, the full moon will fall on the same days, but that's later on in the month. All right, so the Sabbath of the Heavenly Father is important. All right, you're supposed to keep it holy. All right, you, uh, the scripture says not to do my my uh, thy pleasures on my on my holy day. Isaiah 58 and 13. It says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath and from doing thy pleasures on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight and uh, the holy of Yahweh honorable and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways or finding thine own pleasure, nor seeking thine own words, which you got guys that are teaching that you can have sex on the Sabbath. That's not honoring the, the, the Heavenly Father's holy day. That's doing your pleasure. All right, you got um, um, individuals on the comment board that got mad at me for doing a video on uh, uh, Bubble Rod Blackfish. All right, uh, uh, Rakav, the GOCC. All right, uh, um, for doing them cheap hat tricks. You know, at the at the pat, you know, the, the the feast that they had or celebration they had after the Passover. The scriptures say that that you're not supposed to um, you know, do your pleasures on the Lord's Sabbath. And then they forget the individual com made a made a stupid comment. First of all, the scriptures that he that he went to didn't even have nothing to do with the Passover. Cause um I think the the guy grabbed uh, Deuteronomy, the sixteenth chapter. I'm trying to I'm trying to find the the exact scripture. Cause it it has it has uh the word rejoice in there, so Deuteronomy sixteen and fifteen, it says seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto Yahweh thy power, and the place which Yahweh shall choose, because Yahweh thy power shall bless thee. In all thine increase and in all thy works of thine hands, therefore shall ye shall surely rejoice. So you search hard for that scripture, but it's, it doesn't have anything to do with the, with the Passover. When you go up to verse 13, it says, Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days. After that, thou shalt gather in thy corn and thy wine. So that scripture is pertaining to the uh the feast of tabernacles is not pertaining to the passover the passover when you keep it you're supposed to have that same fear in you that our forefathers had matter of fact 
when you go into the scriptures, I'm I'm gonna come back to that. Give me just a second. When you go into the book of uh, Hebrews, all right, it tells you about Moses, right? And it says that um, basically Moses kept the 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 Passover with fear because they didn't know if that if the death angel was was gonna come in, if it was gonna you know take them out. You know, if they were going to uh, uh, die that night, this is uh, Hebrews 11 and, and um, 28. It says, through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. So, so that was a night of fear. That was a night of terror. OK, they were afraid. They were scared because they didn't know if that death angel was going to come in. And if it was going to kill him. So going back to Deuteronomy and let's get the correct part that's speaking about the Passover and how you're supposed to observe it. So this is Deuteronomy 16 and one. It says, observe the month of a bib, which which that wouldn't have been there would have just been the first month because we didn't call our months a bib, you know, Kaslu, all right, Nissan. All right, just to throw out a few different names. All right, we call our months, the first month, the second month, the third, the fourth, all the way up until the twelfth. And kept the Passover into Yahweh thy power in the month of Bib. Uh, Yahweh thy power brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover into Yahweh thy power of the flock of the herd and the place which Yahweh shall choose. To place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. So when you keep the Passover, you're supposed to keep it the same way our forefathers kept it. You're supposed to be in the same mental frame. All right. What does the word remember means? All right. You're supposed to have that same terror. All right. Because the heavenly father can have the death angel pass over your ass here. So when you go into the word for remember the word, there's H2142, which is a car. And it says to remember, to recall, to call to mind. To be brought to remembrance. To be brought to mind. So. <laughs> when it's re-brought to mind. Then all of that same terror. All of that same fear. Is supposed to be there as well. And you supp it's supposed to be a serious. Solemn assembly. Not one where you're rejoicing and you're partying and you're having a good time. Obviously, that's someone that doesn't fear the Heavenly Father. All right. You're not supposed to be singing and rejoicing and have it. It's still a Sabbath. <laughs> these people think, you know, I want to say these motherfuckers, these, you know, they think that as soon as the Passover processions is done, that that that's it. You know, you can you can go to doing whatever you want to. No, it's still a Sabbath. So anyways, you know, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. You know, um, I meant to mention also, you know, that I um, was watching uh, Pasu Tahar's video, you know, earlier. You know, I got to go back and uh, finish watching the rest of it. But I'll, I'll put a link you know, of the video in the description box. And as always, you, you already know the Apostle uh, Tahar's video is going to be on point, very edifying, you know, but make sure you go to uh, check it out, okay, and be uh, edified. All right, until the next time, Shalom.